Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk. My name is Rio Duan. I'm from Baidu Research, working on quantum computing. First of all, I would like to thank the local organizers to make this conference available. I organized the same conference six years ago in Australian Sydney, so I know how difficult it is. And today, it's my great pleasure to present some of our quantum computing research at Baidu. First of all, I would like to introduce a little bit about Baidu to you. Baidu was co-founded by Mr. Robin Lee in 2000 uh, with the purpose to help people to access information more equally and more efficiently over the internet. It has been a great success and has been listed at NASDAQ in 2005. Now, Baidu has become a leading search engine, information and knowledge centered platform and also an AI company. We have the mission to make the complicated world more simpler through technology. Uh, we have built a very powerful mobile ecosystem and also AI innovative business. In particular, our search service has become more intelligent. We also have Baidu Scholar and Baidu AI Cloud. And uh, most notably, we have this Apollo uh, autonomous driving platform, open sourced. And we have Baidu Maps and Baidu Brain uh, and uh, Xiaodu, the smart speaker. And uh, we also have this uh, Paddle Paddle uh, deep learning framework. All these products and technologies are based on many years of investment in fundamental research. Indeed, almost uh, nine years ago, our CTO, Dr. Hyphen Wang and co colleagues already started to build this uh, institute for deep learning. Now, Baidu Research has already have nine different labs and covering many different areas of research, in particular, big data and uh, deep learning, and uh, also like uh, quantum computing and computational biology. We want to bring all talented researchers from around the world to conduct this uh, future-looking research. Quantum computing is, of course, a very promising topic for future. And uh, Baidu realized the potential of this uh, field uh, many years ago. And uh, three years ago, we eventually we uh, launched an institute for quantum computing. And uh, the mission of our uh, institute is to conduct uh, world-needing research in quantum artificial intelligence, and then to make sure Baidu is ready in quantum era, and uh, to develop new quantum business. And uh, for this purpose, we conduct uh, three different area uh, research. One is quantum algorithm, one is uh, quantum AI applications, and also quantum architecture. This is a QAAA research plan. And uh, to uh, achieve this, we want to eventually achieve our vision that everyone can quantum. That means we hope everyone can access quantum power equally and more efficiently using our service. And uh, I'm happy to tell you that indeed we already realized a preliminary version for this QAAA plan. Uh, we built this Baidu quantum platform with three key products. The first is Quantum Leaf. It is a quantum computing platform. So our users can program a quantum computer using this platform. And also we have this uh, course. It is an uh, interface between hardware and uh, software. So we can use this course to control hardware. And also we have this uh, paddle quantum. It is a bridge between quantum computing and AI technologies. So here is the landscape of our Baidu quantum platform. You can see our platform provides a connection from the applications to hardware through many different software. In particular, we focus on four different trackers, research, education, industry, and uh, AI. Scientists can use our platform to conduct their fundamental research. And uh, educational providers can use our platform to train students in quantum computing. We also provide our industrial partners with quantum power and uh, eventually, we will want to provide these uh, systematic AI solutions. And uh, 
you can see the key point here is that we want to provide quantum infrastructure as a service. And then, eventually, the, our customers can actually access quantum power. I will introduce them, each of them, one by one to you, and to show the power of this, uh, all these different products. First is the Quantum Leaf, which is a cloud-native quantum computing platform. So with this Quantum Leaf, we actually we also provide a very accessible user end, very friendly to help people to program quantum computers. So we have this uh, Q Compute. This is a SDK, Software Development Toolkit, to help developers to write a program. And this is for professionals. Also, we have this uh, PYLI and the Quantum Composer. It's more helpful for other, you know, like if you're a student, if you just want to play uh, with quantum computing, you can use this uh, PYLI. And also, you can use a uh, Quantum Composer for a more intuitive way to program. Also, Quantum Leaf, of course, have many other features. Most notably, it has a very powerful Quantum Tool Tray. Indeed, it supports this hybrid programming. And also, it supports the simulator up to 28 qubits on this local PC. And if you use cloud, you can simulate up to 33 for the moment. Of course, we also have this quantum application construction. We, can, we have already open sourced our SDK. Uh, you can also use the third party simulators on the quantum processing unit. And, uh, it also supports this, uh, other useful properties like quantum programming, life cycle management. We have many examples. You can, so you don't have to uh, know a lot about how to program. You can just play with our examples. So here I want to give you a Hello World example. You can see here is a, a program. And uh, one by one, we can see we can use the Q Compute SDK just to use the, this uh, instruction. And then, this will support this hybrid language. So you have this uh, simple and pure Python syntax. And also, here we can simply apply a quantum gate to qubits without knowing the underlying topology of this uh, hardware. So it's a device-independent quantum programming. Also, you have the choice to use the local simulator or cloud simulator. As I said, uh, we have three different choices for programmers. So you can, here we can see a video clip to demonstrate a different uh, programming mode. In Quantum Leap, there are three types of components available for the front end, including Q-Compute, online, and the Q-Composer. This state is a kind of fail state. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a quantum circuit with these components. Q-Compute is more suitable for professional users. First, you need to install it and configure your environment. And then, you can use Python and the quantum programming language for hybrid development. PyOnline and the Q-Composer are more friendly for beginners. You don't have to do the installation and the configuration, but just log in the Quantum Hub website. There are so many interesting assumptions and practices in quantum computing. Welcome to join us on Quantum Journey. So here I want to give you one additional advanced application of this uh, quantum leaf. Indeed, we can use this uh, quantum leaf to do research on quantum chemistry. For example, here we can realize this uh, VQE algorithm on our platform. So we can calculate the ground state energy of this uh, hydrogen molecule. And uh, we know that the ground state energy is just the minimal eigenvalue of the related Hamiltonian. And the first step is to construct the hybrid quantum uh, programming and then the circuit for this um, problem. And then we have different choice to either use the classical simulator to do the calculation directly or use the uh, QPU if available. So here I show you the case that we use the classical simulator to do the simulation. So now I, I would like to introduce you another powerful product we have. It is the pad quantum. So the idea of pad quantum is uh, the following. We know that uh, AI technologies are most uh, powerful tools we have for the moment. And how we can actually use the, uh, these AI technologies to help us to conduct uh, quantum computing research is of crucial importance. 
So the, there is a urgent need to combine this quantum computing together with AI. Idea is uh, we try to combine this uh, AI and the quantum computing using a, a tool, uh, a deep learning framework developed by Baidu scientists and uh, engineers named uh, Paddle Paddle. So Paddle means parallel distributed deep learning. And uh, this Paddle Paddle actually has uh, many nice features. The first one is it is uh, a support intervention between dynamic and the static computational graphs. And uh, another one is actually it can support this uh, hyperscale training models with maybe trillions of these parameters. And also it uh, contains many very useful industrial level models, more than actually 200 models, including like the uh, natural language processing, ALP, and also computer vision, CV, the more advanced models will be quantum computing we will talk about, and also computational biology. I have to see that Paddle Paddle has become the home for more than 2.3 million developers and uh, have collaborations already uh, with more than 200 universities. You know, in the development of Paddle Quantum, I want to explain a little bit about how this how they're connected to each other. For the classical machine learning, deep learning case, we have a neural network. And uh, then we update the net parameters and uh, reduce the loss function and uh, repeat this process and until it reaches the expectation. And the quantum case is similar, but we, we don't have this neural network anymore. We have quantum neural network. So it is actually a circuit with many unspecified parameters in the, each gate. And then we simply we just update the, this uh, quantum neural network until the expectation value is achieved the desired uh, value. So uh, this uh, paddle quantum, uh, of course, has many very nice properties. It's very easy to use. Indeed, we have more than 15 tutorials, very accessible for beginners. And also, we have many templates, which makes it very easy to build your own quantum neural networks. And, uh, it supports this automatic differentiation. In addition to that, we also have many different optimization modes and support this GPU. You can use this as a quantum simulator. You can simulate about 20 qubits just on your local PC. Also, we have other featured toolkits. Particular, we can develop several a machine learning algorithm, and we realize this uh, part of quantum that can provide to our users. We also developed this uh, LCC net for distributed quantum information processing. And uh, the applications of part of quantum covers many major applications of quantum computing. We can use this to solve the, this optimization problem. And we can also use this to do quantum machine learning and uh, quantum chemistry. But here, I, I was most excited to tell you we can actually use this uh, part of quantum to do this uh, quantum distributed quantum information processing. Here is the framework. We want to develop the tool for distributed quantum information processing. So it's uh, LCC in quantum neural networks. So LCC, I, I guess many people here know about it. It is uh, more, uh, very useful in quantum information processing, we will have different parties, and they are separated to each other, and then they can only perform these local quantum operations and classical communication. So that is LCC. So the idea of this LCC net is similar to the, similar to the quantum neural networks, with the constraint that the operation have to be LCC. So that any sort of bob, maybe we have more than two parties, but each of them will up, keep quantum neural network and then to update the parameters to make sure to achieve the desired value. And we can use this part of quantum to do this like uh, entanglement distillation, which is a fundamental task in quantum information processing. And uh, we can also use it to do this LCC discrimination of state. And also to use this to realize, for example, a communication channel from Anis to Bob. So 
the benefits we have is that we can use the machine learning to develop the many LCC protocols. And also, uh, we can optimize the LCC protocol in some automatic way, because it's uh, very difficult to develop a good LCC protocol. And uh, I'll give you an example that I show you how LCC net actually play an important role already. Here is an example. We can develop a nice distillation protocol uh, use uh, this new tool. So we have this very special state, S state, which is a mixture of a uh, bell state and a product state. They're not orthogonal to each other. And then I is the Bob. If they use a protocol that is not symmetric, then they can actually, if they have two copies of this S state, then they can output a state that have the high fidelity than all previous known protocol. And indeed, uh, we, we know that the protocol, very famous protocol by Deutsch, Actor, Juza, and uh, Popescu, Sapra, and uh, Machiavello. They developed that protocol in 1996. And uh, even recently, people still work on this like in 28. And uh, our result actually match with the PPT bond. So that is optimal. The surprising thing is that it is an analytical protocol eventually. So this is something very surprise because um, it's a big surprise because we know that uh, we use the machine learning techniques to eventually find this new protocol. And it's all different from previous uh, ones. So the third product I want to introduce is a course. So this is actually it's a cloud-based platform for quantum control. So almost uh, two years ago, we already have a product. It's a pause generation for quantum gates. But today, what I have is uh, we upgrade this, and we have a cloud-based platform for quantum control. So it's much more powerful. Pause is to assume you users can write a program using quantum leaf. So it's become a sequence of quantum logic gates. And then course just to translate or compile this, uh, this sequence of gates into a sequence of pause. And then we can use this sequence of pause to control the quantum hardware. So the benefits we have is uh, because it's cloud-based, so it has very high performance. Also, we can have this uh, generic pause scheduler, so it's more uh, general for more general quantum circuits. And uh, also, it's more practical, because you know, we're not just working on one qubit gates or two qubit gates. We actually we can work on a sequence of gates. And also, it, it is uh, suitable for more different, for different platform. Currently, we support this uh, superconductive quantum computing, but also uh, we all support this NMR quantum computing. We also develop many other tools, and uh, it's also open source IDK available already. You can use it to do our research, and uh, also many other powerful toolkits. So here I give you some example. Of course, we have this uh, post generation service for one qubit uh, gate and also two qubit gates. In addition to that, even for for quantum circuit, that means a sequence of quantum gates. We can also have this. Uh, pause scheduling. And uh, we can also use this for this uh, visualization of dynamic uh, evolution and uh, do this gate error analysis. But uh, the most interesting application is uh, we actually develop this uh, VQE algorithm at the pause level. So I will show you this interesting application. The idea is, again, to just uh, calculate the ground state energy of this uh, hydrogen molecule. And uh, so the, we know that by VQE algorithm, we can output the quantum neural network for this problem. But here, you know, we each logical case have some parameter. And they are not directly used for controlling quantum hardware. So we have to do the, a further step to translate them into pods. So that's you know, what we, we will do at, uh, in this uh, course VQE algorithm, so it uh, will eventually it will translate the problem to you know to to calculate a set of parameters to specify the pulse. 
So uh, you can see that eventually we can output the this pause for for this problem, and uh, of course, uh, Kalti, we if we use the simulator, we can test the result is actually correct. But uh, if we have hardware available, then of course we can directly run this hardware. Here we can see a video clip. In this brief demo, we will demonstrate how to implement the pulse-based BQE algorithm using quads. We begin by accounting for the qubit's physical topology and construct the system Hamiltonian. Upon establishing the NSATs, we add the control terms to the system Hamiltonian and schedule the pulse sequence on the system accordingly. Quants then enables us to upload the tasks onto Quants cloud service and retrieve the corresponding gradient and loss function. Finally, the ground state energy of the hydrogen molecule is computed locally and the corresponding pulse sequence shortly afterwards. So now I want to discuss another aspect. We know that quantum computing is a emerging field and have received a lot of attention and have this great future. But the problem is all this is impossible without talented people. And uh, at Baidu, we have started to some uh, work on how to train the next generation. Indeed, we have this Baidu A-Star contest. It is a, it is a top tier AI programming contest. And uh, it has been lasted for 16 years and uh, have 300,000 talented players to participate. Last year, we organized the contest with quantum computing as the topic for the final. And uh, we have five problems for the players and, uh, to our surprise. Most people, they don't have any background in quantum computing, but they have done a wonderful job. Especially for this uh, young player, he's only 12 years old, but he solved three out of five problems. From him, I see the future of quantum computing. And uh, also, we know that Quantum computing is a huge project. It is uh, not for one person, one company, or even one country. It needs the all talented researchers from the world to work together, and then we can achieve something. Actually, at Baidu, we don't do everything ourselves. Instead, we try to build a sustainable quantum ecosystem, and uh, based on this Baidu quantum platform. So we will provide a service to our users and uh, collaborators. And also we will collaborate with hardware providers by providing the hardware interface. Here I want to see that we don't do hardware directly, but instead we try to develop a hardware interface. So this is, uh, I think this is a, a very flexible strategy and also it's make sure we will be open for all hardware providers. Of course, we also uh, always welcome the collaboration with the research institutions we are very keen to sponsor this uh, like top conference like QIP or, and uh, even many other conferences. We have this, uh, we are welcome the professional consultant to help us for the, the future planning and uh, research. Especially here I have this uh, Professor Arte Actor as our advisory board member. If you are interested in doing this QAAA plan, if you're interested in you know, what we're doing, you're welcome to join us. We have a position available from the tech leaders, uh, from the researchers, or even visiting scholars or interns. So if you're interested in this, just send us an email. Thank you very much.